Hi, boys and girls. My name is Miss Jennifer, and I'm a teaching artist in the Pace Art Program. Here to integrate the arts with the classroom curriculum. We're coming to you today thanks to the Acadiana Center for the Arts and the Lafayette Parish School System in Lafayette, Louisiana. And today we're going to be learning about llamas. I am going to read the book, Is Your Mama a Llama? to you. And we are going to be creating a llama picture today. And as you can see, I decided to make that kind of a fun little lesson and that we are going to make our llama part of a celebration today. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's get all of our supplies together and let's begin. All right, ladies and girls. So today we're going to be talking about this animal. Does anybody have an idea what this animal might be called? You're right, it is a llama. And we're going to be making a llama picture today. Now, if you look closely at this picture, I decided that we are going to have a little celebration today. And we're just going to make our llama have on some really cool glasses and maybe even like a birthday hat. And I'm going to also teach you how to draw a frame around your picture today. So let's go ahead and get started. And so llamas actually are different colors. Here is a white one. Here is one that is sort of a, like a kind of a off-white and brown. And here is one that is dark brown with a little bit of white on the head and the mouth. So llamas are different colors. And what's pretty amazing about a llama is a llama is part of the camel family. The only difference is a llama does not have a hump on its back. So if we look here at this one, we can see that there's no hump on its back, but it does look a lot like a camel. So llamas are domesticated animals. And what domesticated means is that they're sort of tame and they are from South America. The llamas live in the Andes Mountains and they are taken care of by the Indians that are in Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, Chile, and Argentina. Now, llamas have long legs, long necks, short tails, small heads, and they have large pointy ears. Look at those ears, how long. Isn't that amazing? And they mostly eat grass and other kinds of plants. They are called pack animals. Does anybody have an idea what a pack animal might be? Well, if an animal lives in a pack, that means that they kind of all live together. So like a pack of dogs live together, dogs all live together, a pack of wolves live together, and so they are pack animals. What's amazing about a llama is that this wool that is on the llama, kind of like wool on a sheep, um, is used to make clothes. A lot of people use this wool they spin it on a spinning wheel and they make it really thin, just like kind of thick string and make clothing out of it. This wool is very, very soft. Now, something else about llamas is that they are work animals. The Indians would put um, different kinds of packages and things on the llama's back and when the llama felt that it was too heavy, it would just lay down and then they knew that they had to take some of that heavy weight off of the llama's back. So the llamas would carry things very far from one place to the other. And I want to go back to this one. There's one super kind of funny thing that llamas do. Llamas, when they get upset, they spit. Oh, can you imagine that llama spitting? Yes, they're well known for spitting. 
not only do they spit, but they also hiss when they are upset. So boys and girls, today we are going to be um, listening to a book written by this author. If we talk about an author of a book, boys and girls, what does an author do? If you said the author writes the book, you were correct. And this author is called Deborah Guarino. And she is the author of a very, very popular children's book called Is Your Mama a Llama? All right, boys and girls. Girls, let's sit back and listen to the story, and then we're going to start working on our drawing. So, is your mama a llama? Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Dave. No, she is not, is the answer Dave gave. She hangs by her feet and she lives in a cave. I do not believe that's how llamas behave. Oh, I said you are right about that. I think that your mama sounds like a what, boys and girls? A bat. You said bat. Good job. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Fred. No, she is not, is what Freddy said. She has a long neck and white feathers and wings. I don't think a llama has all of those things. Oh, I said, you don't need to go on. I think that your mama must be a, what boys and girls, a swan. Good job. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Jane. No, she is not, Jane politely explained. She grazes on grass and she likes to say moo. I don't think that is what a llama would do. Oh, I said, I understand now. I think that your mama must be a... Good job, you're saying it already. A cow, awesome. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Clyde. No, she is not, is how Clyde replied. She has flippers and whiskers and eats fish all day. I do not think llamas act quite in that way. Oh, I said, I'm beginning to feel that your mama must really be a seal. Good job. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Rhonda. No, she is not, is how Rhonda responded. She's got big hind legs and a pocket for me. So I don't think a llama is what she could be. Oh, I said, that is certainly true. I think that your mama's a what, boys and girls? A kangaroo, good job. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Lloyd. Our mamas belong to the same herd and you know all about llamas, cause you are one too. Yes, you are right, I said to my friend. My mama is, and this is, what boys and girls? A llama. So, his mama was a llama. Good job. I love that little book, and I hope that you enjoyed it too. So boys and girls, we are now going to start our picture. I need you to get your eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of white paper. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the top and we're going to fold it down to the bottom, just like this. And then you're going to press it down with your finger. If you turn your paper to the side, it will look like a card. You will then take your ruler and a pencil, you'll put your ruler on that fold and you will draw a line going across, just like this. This will kind of help us know where the middle of the paper is. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do the opposite. So what we're gonna do is we folded it this way, 
already. And we call this fold a hamburger fold. A hamburger fold. But now we want to fold our paper the opposite way so that we have a long, tall rectangle. And when we fold it this way, we call this a hot dog fold. It's kind of like a long hot dog. Again, you'll take your pencil and you'll put your ruler up against that folded line and you are going to draw a line down the middle. Now remember, you don't have to press super, super hard when you're doing this with your pencil because we will erase this line. Now there's one more thing that we're gonna do. We're gonna look at this line in the middle of our paper. We're gonna take the top of our paper and we're going to fold it down to that middle line, just like this. And we're going to fold it again, just like that, folding the top to the middle. Take your ruler and there we go, draw a line. So now you have two lines that are going from side to side. If they're going side to side, boys and girls, is that vertically or horizontally? If you said horizontally, you were correct. Good job. Now that line that we drew down the middle, is that vertically or horizontally? If you said vertically, you are correct. Good job. And so these lines are going to help us when we are drawing our picture today. And so I want you to go ahead and get that part done. And Ms. Jennifer will be here waiting for you. All right, you should now have your paper folded and you should be ready to begin. We're going to start with our black marker. Now, if for some reason you don't have a black marker, just pick a color that's like maybe dark brown or something like that so that you can see it very well while you are drawing. And here are my lines on my paper. So what we're going to do first is we're going to start making our llama today by putting a dot about right here. So notice it's right under that line, but not quite in the middle. Do you see that? It's not quite in the middle. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put another dot underneath about this far, about one finger space. Then we're going to start and we're going to draw one little line going this way and one going this way. So it's half on one side and half on the other side. Right under that, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put two little lines. We are actually making the sunglasses on our llama. Be creative. They don't have to look exactly like Miss Jennifer's. Just have fun with them. All right, that's the bridge or the middle of glasses. So if you look here at Miss Jennifer's glasses, this part right here is what we just made. That's called the bridge of the glasses right here. And now we want to make the other parts of it. So I would say that we are going to sort of make a curve line going up. And it is another one that's kind of going up like this on both sides. So what you do on one side right now, we're going to do to the other. Then we're going to start at that end of the glasses. We're going to make a curved line that's going to connect back to the line in the middle. Good job. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to start from this side and we're going to make a line going back to the the bottom of the glasses bridge. Then on the inside, you simply want to make the lens of your glasses. Remember, you can make your glasses look different than mine. That is okay. Just make them fun. All right. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to go down here to the middle, where our lines meet in the middle. And what we're going to do is we want to make an oval around that line, 
So kind of maybe like a circle. Mine's more like a circle. So that it looks like this. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to kind of connect them together. That is going to be part of his nose. Now let's take that dot and let's make it into lines. What we're going to do at the bottom is we're going to make another curved line. And we're going to do the same thing on the top. Just like this. And that's going to be his nose. Now notice I made it a little different from this one. Because you know what? When we're drawing, that is something that we definitely can do. Good job. All right. We're going to go back to this dot that we have on top of his glasses. And we're going to make a curved line about this far and a curved line about this four. We're starting to make the top of his head now. And about right here on the top of the glasses, we can put a dot here and here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to connect those lines together. So connect that dot to that dot and that dot to that dot. That's going to be the top of his head. Now, if you remember when Miss Jennifer talked about the llama, we talked about the ears being very what? Very long, very long ears. And we see that this ear is sort of like a curve line. So we're going to start here. We're going to go up as high as we want, around and back to that dot right on top of the glasses. So we're going to start at the end here. We're going to go around and back to the dot on top of the glasses. We'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll start at this dot and we'll go back down to this dot on the end and we now have the ears if you feel like you might want to make another curved line for the inside part of the ears you can do that now how's it coming along i bet yours are looking so awesome i can't wait to see what they look like when they, you're finished and saying that i want you to make sure that you finish doing your picture today that you get your parents to take a picture of you with your llama and have your parents put it on Facebook tagging the Acadiana Center for the Arts so that Miss Jennifer and people in the community can see you and your llama picture today. Again, take a picture, put it on Facebook, tag the Acadiana Center for the Arts, and we will all get a chance to see your picture. All right. So now what I want you to do is up here, almost at the top of your paper, I want you to put a dot. We are now going to make a birthday hat or a celebration hat. And we're going to go from here to the dot and then from here to the dot. I was sort of thinking that with our celebration, it could be a birthday maybe. I thought that maybe we could have a llama birthday. What do you think? I think that would be fun. And so let's make our llama a hat. Do you have to make it into a triangular hat? Absolutely not. If you wanna get creative and you wanna make the hat any way that you want, I'll say, you know what, let's do this. All right, so on the top, I'm going to color in a black circle and then I want to make sort of like a little pom-pom on the top with these little lines. And so if you want to add that to the top of your hat, you can. And so now we have our llama's glasses, his nose and mouth, his ears, the top of his head, and our hat. On this one, I put polka dots. But I think on this one hat, I actually think I want to make some curved lines and maybe make them like some stripes on the hat. So let's decorate our hat now. All right. 
Now we're going to move to the bottom of our llama. And we simply just want to make zigzag lines all the way down to the bottom of our paper. So I figured if we start about right here, right in the middle of the bottom of the glasses and we put a dotted line and we sort of make zigzag lines just going down to about right here and then we'll stop because we'll make a frame around our picture and then at this dot we'll do the same thing just making zigzag lines all the way down now here on this one i put some little dash lines and so we can also kind of do that and they can go in different ways and that's kind of just showing a little bit of the fur on our llama. Good job. I'll let you catch up. All right. Now, in the glasses, sometimes when light shines into someone's glasses, there's like a glare in the glasses. And so I just kind of drew some lines. And if you want to put a glare in your sunglasses on your llama, you can do that. Hey, right. how's it coming? Oh, I bet they look so great. I can't wait to see them. All right, the next thing that we're going to do at the bottom of our paper, we're going to draw a straight line. Now notice I didn't go all the way to the edge and I'm gonna do the same thing to the top. I'm going to draw a straight line about the same length here and here. Then I'm going to connect those lines together. It does not have to be perfect, boys and girls. Just the best that you can. And now we just started the outside part of our frame. Now when we have a frame, if you look at the corners here, sometimes when they make a frame, they will kind of put the corners together kind of at an angle like this instead of straight together. And so here I drew a diagonal line to make it look like the corner of a frame. So you'll start at the corner and you'll go to the outside of your paper making a diagonal line. And let's do that so to this side, a diagonal line, a diagonal line on this corner and a diagonal line on this corner. Looking good. All right. And if you see here, I sort of made my frame look like wood and it's kind of knots. When you cut wood, sometimes on the inside of the wood, you'll see like these rings or these dots inside. And so I sort of made them like ovals, kind of like for making spirals, sort of. Just like this, where you start in the middle, get bigger and bigger. But this time, instead of making spirals with a circle, I made it with an oval. And so you can simply make them on frame anywhere that you want. So let's do that now. I'm gonna turn my paper to make a few more. You could have some really big long ones, some short ones. It's really up to you. And there I go. I have a couple. I also want to put some little black dash lines also to make it look like parts of the wood just like this and then you're going to do that all the way around your frame just like this and you can go back and you can add more as you want all right so let's go ahead and let's finish drawing our llama if you did not finish and let's make our frame. I'll be right here waiting for you. So boys and girls, now that we have finished our frame and we finished drawing our llama picture, it is time to color. Now it's really up to you if you want to use markers or you want to use crayons for this. Um, I'm going to leave it simply up to what you want to do. I think I'm going to use um, both. And so I'm going to start off first and I want to color the glasses. So here's the picture that I did earlier and I want to do this one different. If you want to get really fancy, you can make stripes on the glasses, polka dots, maybe different kinds of lines. It's really up to what you want. So I think what I'm going to do 
is I am going to actually make mine with some different colors. And I'm going to start off with this really pretty, it's called the primrose color. I'm kind of liking this color. So go ahead, boys and girls, and let's work on your glasses. Then the next color I think I'm going to use is some yellow. And I'm just going to kind of spread it here and there. Nothing in particular. Just having a little fun with it. I'm going to get some blue. And I'm going to add some blue. Anywhere that you want, you can color it. Or if you want to color it the same color, that's fine also. You can do that. I just want some really festive glasses, especially since my llama is having a celebration. Something really festive and fun. And so, oh, here I go. Add some pink. And let's see. Hmm, what other color would I maybe want? Um, maybe some purple. Oh, that's a really dark purple. So now I kind of have some dark and light colors together. But that kind of looks nice. So I'm going to add a little bit right here. Alright. How's it going? I can't wait to see your wacky glasses. I hope that you post them on Facebook and tag the Acadiana Center for the Arts so that I can see it along with other boys and girls in the community. Alright, and now I'm going to move on and I want to color the stripes on my hat. So I'm going to go purple. Here. You know what? I'm going to make a pattern. So I'm going to color in all of these purple. And then I think that I want to use this pretty blue. Let me use the other side. And so I'm going to color this part blue. Now, if I have blue and then purple and I want to make a pattern, what color would I use next, boys and girls? You're correct. I would use blue then purple, then blue, then purple, then blue, purple, and blue. You don't have to do the same colors and you can actually color it any kind of way that you would like. Now on the inside of the ears, um, I want to sort of put a light color um, and for that, this one, I did pink. But for this one, I think I might want to put some brown. Doesn't really matter what color you use. Just color it the way that you want. All right, so here's one. And here's two. All right, and there's the inside of the ears. Now, I made my llama um, a white llama, but if you remember, we could have an off-white and brown llama. You could have a white, you could even maybe put some gray or black inside the ears. And you could also have a brown llama. Now, this one looks like it has pink on the ends of the ears right here. I think it's just when the sun was shining on the llama's ears. I think the inside of these ears um, are black. And so... Doesn't matter which one you want, anything that you want. I'm gonna leave my llama <clears throat> white, but I want to take my black crayon and I just kind of want to just kind of color in some light little lines, kind of making it look like maybe it's the wool that's on my llama. And I could do a little bit of that in the ears too. So that looks like some parts of the wool and there I go. Now I want to color in the nose and for the nose I think I might want to color this part with a crayon so I'm going to color these two with a um, lighter brown and then I'm going to look and here I have a door 
darker brown. So I'm going to color the top and the bottom part with the darker brown, again using crayons and markers kind of mixed together throughout this picture. And if you see out here um, behind my llama, I sort of um, just made like three little lines together kind of here and there. And that's definitely something that you could do with your markers or your crayons. Just kind of put little lines here and there. Makes it look like our little party is really festive. And I'm gonna add a little bit more. Let's see. Um, you know what? I think I want this purple. I like this purple color. All right, and there we go. Now, you're gonna decide what color that you want to color the part that's behind your llama. This part right here would be called the background of your picture. It's what's behind the llama. Your llama would be what's in the foreground. Your llama would be in the front. So llama is the what? The foreground. It's what is in front of our picture. The little lines in the back are the background. It's what's behind our foreground. Remember our llama being our foreground. For this one, I colored my picture um, yellow, but I think I'm going to color this one peach. So peach is just a really light color. And I'm going to use a crayon to do that. If you want to use markers for the whole background, you can go ahead and do that. It might take you a little bit longer to color it, but it's, it's okay. It's whatever you want your picture to be. And so I'm coloring the background. Remember that's behind the llama. And I'm coloring it peach. If you want to color this part different colors, you can also do that. Um, and you know what? I... I'm going to turn my paper a little bit simply because I want to be able to color it a little bit better on this side without coloring inside the llama's body. This would actually be a pretty color to actually color the um, llama's body too, this peach color. All right. All right, and so now I finished coloring the background and now I want to color my frame. This might be where you want to take a marker and maybe trace over some of those black lines that we made. Um, maybe even making some dash lines kind of here and there. Maybe you can even trace the corner lines a little bit. And so here I go. I'm gonna trace over this one. I'm making some little dashes. Here and there, and there I go. Now, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to decide on what color you want your frame. I would say probably make your frame a lighter color than the brown that you use to trace the um, black lines, just so that it shows a lot better. And you don't even really have to um, use brown um, for this one, I am going to just use some yellow. Oh, nope. Actually, that's not yellow, Miss Jennifer. That is somewhat orange, yes. But you could use yellow. All right. And so I'm going to color my frame. And I'm turning my paper as I go just because it's a little easier for me to color my frame. And there I go. My frame is just about finished. Remembering that you can use any color that you want. I am now finished with my llama. If you did not get a chance to finish coloring it, then simply after this video, go back and color the rest. I hope that you enjoyed this little lesson and hope to see you again soon. I want you to make sure that you come back and see us every day at 10 a.m. on the Acadiana Center for the Arts YouTube channel for kindergarten, first, and second grade, each tied to the academic curriculum. You can also get these lessons on AOC as part of the Learn United program. Accessible on AOC on Cox Channel 16 or LUS Channel 4. Kindergarten lessons will be aired at 8 a.m. and first and second grade will be aired at 
9 a.m. The lessons will be in visual arts and some will be in creative movement. Be sure to come back and make art with us tomorrow. If you are interested in supporting programs like this, visit the Acadiana Center for the Arts org, the nonprofit that manages the PACE program. Spread the word and be sure to share our videos and keep making art.